So 2.2 is the multiplication property, and the multiplication property is similarly strangely named um, like, the, uh, like the addition property was, in that oftentimes we're going to be dividing instead of multiplying. So what it says is that if you have an equation, you can multiply or divide the equation by the same number to make an equivalent equation. And so basically, if you have these two sides, the left side and the right side of an equation, you could multiply them both by C and it would preserve the value of this. So it would change the way it looks, but preserve the value. And the, the key thing with this is, again, we're trying to solve equations. We're trying to get down to X equals something as an answer. So that last example in 2.1, we had a coefficient of negative one on our X. And I said that, okay, well, if you divide by that coefficient, you get down to just x. So x equals a positive 1. And so that was kind of the lead up to this section. Let's take a look how this works without 1s and negatives, but with bigger numbers, because usually that can um, make it seem a little bit easier. So for a, this is one that you could almost do intuitively, right? We'll develop our strategies in this. So I want x by itself. Well, x is actually being multiplied by 6 here. So to get rid of that, because that's the way I said it before, it's not adding or subtracting 6, but we'd have to divide by 6 in order to get the x by itself. Something divided by itself is 1, and that's why it says up here. It's kind of like writing equivalent fractions. That was why I said that. Maybe that doesn't make sense for you at all. That's not a negative sign there. Okay, so 6 divided by 6 is 1, leaving me with an x, and 18 divided by 6 is 3, and that's my solution. Just for this one, I am going to follow my own instructions and verify. Not that you need to, but just to remind you, we can. 6 times 3 would be 18, and yeah, that checks out. So in all of these, what we're going to be doing is dividing by the coefficient to solve for x. Um, and the way you can think about it is, well, you want to get x by itself. So what's blocking you from having x by itself? In C here, it's that 7 as the coefficient. So if I divide by 7, that would get x by itself. That means I need to divide the other side by 7. So I get that x equals a negative 6. And you sure could verify this one if you wanted to. Down below, you're going to divide by the coefficient to solve. The fives go away and we're left with x equaling negative 7. I haven't said it in these examples, but this is where my like give one, like one kid two cookies, you have to give the other kid two cookies. It usually falls apart and I said it once, if I divide one kid into five, I have to divide the other kid into five. So it, it doesn't work for parenting, um, but yeah, still the same thing on both sides. So for D, I've got a negative sign here. I want to get rid of the coefficient, I want just x by itself. So again, I'm going to divide by my coefficient, in this case, a negative 9. That would make it go away. x would equal a negative 6. And if you get a negative number, it might be worth going back and checking. These ones are also simple enough that you can even just look back and be like, yeah, that checks out. Negative 9 times negative 6 is 54. So everyone's favorite and fractions. In these ones, your textbook um, tells you to, uh, well, no, we won't go with the way the textbook says. So in these ones, what we've got going on is we've got our, co our number being divided by 3. So when we are doing um, the addition property, basically you're doing the opposite um, operation. And that's something that's been taught to you probably in other courses. And so in this one, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 3 in order to get x by itself. So that means it's going to rewrite it here for us. So this is just it rewritten. And I multiply this side by 3 and this side by 3 in order to get rid of that 3 down below. So I get x equals an 18. For B, when I take a look at this one, I see I've got a 5 down below, so I want to get rid of that one. And in order to get rid of it, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by that number down below. So that number down below being 5, I would multiply the first one side by 5 and the other side by 5. Sometimes, and in my notes, I, I just rewrite them a little bit squishy, um, you know, throwing the 5 in up here. 
but it is kind of nice to see them the first few times all written out a little bit neater. So we get x equaling a negative 45. C, I'm going to do what I just said. You're multiplying both sides by 7, kind of writing it in here all squishy. Then I'm left with x equaling 21. And D, multiplying both sides by 4, so that I get the x by itself. I get that x equals a negative 32. All right, so things are getting a little bit more complicated as we move on to the next. This is the first that we've seen fractions, and I'm going to give us a strategy for dealing with anything that has fractions in it that is a little different than the textbook. So moving on with these ones, your textbook says to multiply by the reciprocal, or we're going to just start by getting rid of the denominator. This is um, Marianne's lingo. That's my way. Oftentimes when people look at, at um, algebra that has fractions in it, it, it does something to your um, confidence sometimes. And so I like to get rid of fractions. Every time I can, um, you know, doing algebra with them, I like getting rid of them because it makes it a lot easier to deal with. So for A, what I'm going to do is start by getting rid of the fractions. So in the earlier questions, in the last ones that we did, we just had a 5 down below, but now we have this 3 up top here. So I'm going to start as if that 3 was just a 1. So I would multiply both sides by the 5. And if it was like what I had done before, the 5s would disappear, but I'm still left with the 3. So I'm going to write 3x equaling 45. This has no more fractions in it anymore. And oftentimes getting rid of those fractions makes these questions a lot easier to deal with. So now we would have to divide by three and divide by three, and I get that x equals 15. Your textbook and the multiplying by the reciprocal gets you to the exact same place. I'm gonna do one of these that's not even in my notes because I really don't, or in my keys, because I don't really like doing it. What it says is multiply by the reciprocal. So that wipes out the coefficient and I get nine, or sorry, that's an X, equaling 45 over three, and I get the same answer, so 15. There are multiple ways of doing these ones. So I'm gonna be, try and be consistent um, in the way that I teach them because I feel like developing these strategies for when it gets harder is worthwhile. So my language down here says, in obliterating the denominator, getting rid of the denominator, multiply everything through by a number that's going to eliminate any denominators. And that'll bring everything above board, meaning that there's no more fractions anymore. So using this language, using this thought to get rid of my denominators here in B, I would multiply both sides by 3 because that would get rid of all my fractions. And writing everything above board, I get a 2x equaling 24. I divide by 2 on both sides, and I get that x equals a 12. And that's my solution for this one. There's no point in doing it both ways. I did this one both ways just because that's the way your textbook supports it, and, and maybe you've done them like that before. But developing these skills for when things get harder, I think is totally worth our time. So supporting that process in C, I would see that I have a 5 as a denominator here. So I would multiply everything through by 5. And that's going to get rid of my denominator. I'm going to write everything above board or without fractions. And I'm going to carry on. I'm trying to solve for x. So I have a coefficient of 4 in front of my x, which means to get rid of it, I would divide by 4. And I have to divide both sides by 4. So I get that x equals 10 as a solution. D, I've got a fraction with a 2 as my denominator. So choosing a number that's going to get rid of that writing it all above board, and finishing up by solving for x. I'd get that x equals a 6. So the last part is just going to take this a little bit further. 
we're going to put these together and we're going to do these ones with fractions with my strategy. Now you can totally get around doing them uh, this way, but we're going to start with these with my strategy. So this is putting things together a little bit. So for A, I have a 7x and a 4x. I can combine those like terms and get 11x. That's going to equal negative 66 as I continue to write my equivalent equation. And then solving for x, I have a coefficient of 11, which means if I want just an x, I'm going to divide both sides by 11. I get a solution then that x equals a negative 6. B, look at this. So I've got a fraction. As soon as I see a fraction, I go to my world of eliminating those fractions. And like I said, you can get to the answer another way here, but I'm going to try and be consistent in my teaching to support you in this. So we're going to choose a number that would get rid of all my denominators. Well, 4 would get rid of all my denominators. So I'm just going to rewrite it because it gets a little bit squishy. And so what my words over here say is choose my number. So my number was four, right? That's what I chose. And I'm going to multiply everything through by four. Now I'm going to cross out my denominator and write everything above board so that I get x plus 12 equaling, what is that, 76? Uh, try 56, Marianne. My goodness. Okay. Then I would subtract 12 from both sides, and I get a final answer that x equals 44. That one certainly, I mean, if you didn't have a key, you could totally verify and sub back in to see if it works. Um, but it, it, it does. That would be 11 plus 3 is 14. Just a quick verification. Okay, you may have done that one without the strategy that I suggested, but these last ones get a little bit more complicated to do without that strategy and certainly won't fit on the page. So for C, I'm going to choose the number that would get rid of all my denominators. So I've got a 3 and a 9 down here. So 9 is going to be that number. I'm going to rewrite this one because what I'm going to do is multiply everything through by that number that I've chosen. So 9 and 9 and 9. And I'm going to bother switching colors on this one because it gets a little bit scribbly. So I've chosen my number. I've multiplied everything through by it. Now I'm going to cross out. I'm going to obliterate my denominators. The 9 and the 9 go away like we've been used to seeing here. But the 9 and the 3, 9 divided by 3, would leave me with a 3. And I switched colors to make it obvious because this is the first time that has happened. So my next line, switching back away from the, the, the red because it's kind of shocking, I'd have a 3, I'd have a minus x, and an 18. And this step hopefully is worth it where you don't have to deal with all those fractions. So I've got my x on this side, which is fine. I'm going to Next line, subtract 3 from both sides. So I'd get negative x equaling 15. And it's kind of like how we ended things off with um, the, the 2.1. I have solved for negative x here, not x. So I have a coefficient of that invisible negative 1. So I have to divide each side by negative 1. And that would give me a final answer of x equaling negative 15. One more like this, and again, I'm going to coach us through with the same strategy. When I see the fractions, I go with this approach where I'm going to choose a number that would get rid of all my fractions. So I have a 6 and a 4 down below. 12 would be a number that would get rid of all my fractions. If you want to think of it as if it's um, common denominators, that's a good way to get to this number, or lowest common multiples is another way to get to this number. So now that I've chosen that number, I'm going to multiply everything through by that number. So I'm going to rewrite this with a little bit extra space in it. Sometimes in my key, I get real scribbly and maybe in your notes. So everything, each of the terms gets multiplied by 12. Then I'm going to switch colors again just so it's, it's, it's a, a little more visible. This crossing out business. So there's nothing to cross out on this first term. The 12 divided by 6 leaves me with a 2. 
the 12 divided by 4 leaves me with a 3. So now writing everything, like I in my words say over there, above board, I'd have a 12x of minus 2 times 5, so minus 10, equaling a 3. And now I've gone through all that trouble of obliterating or clearing my denominator. I'm down to an equation that hopefully is worth the while, worth your time in making it um, a little bit easier. So I'm going to add 10 to both sides, and I get 12x equaling 13. And this one's ugly. Divide both sides by 12, and I get my final answer of x equals 13 over 12. And as ugly as that is, and as much as you don't want to verify that one, that one is our final solution. These ones definitely take some time. Be kind with yourself. We're going to see them more and more. Um, and in the next section, we're going to be combining the addition and the multiplication rule. Even though in these ones we kind of already are, um, we're going we're gonna to take a look at combining these rules to solve um, these equations. And so, yeah, give this, this um, strategy a shot because I think it's really something that we can build on when things get harder.